Welcome and thank you for joining us at Love Life Christian Fellowship Church with the ministry gifts of Dr. Grace C. Washington, where we preach, provide, and prepare God's people to love life. Continue to listen until the end of this broadcast for information about our weekly services and how to connect with us to become a member. Praise God from whom all blessings flow and praise God for you this morning. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning and happy Sunday to you, my sisters and brothers in Christ. I am Reverend Shatu Blake, and I bring you greetings this morning and welcome you to the Love Life Christian Fellowship Church online worship experience. On behalf of our wonderful pastor, Dr. Grace Washington and Deacon Robert Washington, we give God praise for directing you to this service on this morning. Now, here we are already in November. Well, no shave November for myself <laughs> because I wanted to show my support in the fight against prostate cancer. Nevertheless, we are already in November of one of the most unusual and unpredictable years I know of my lifetime. 2020 revealed to us that Satan ain't playing. Loved ones, friends, celebrities, etc., so on and so forth, have been tremendously affected by the events in this year. But we are still here because God gave us a mission to build a community to impact the world. So regardless of the distraction, regardless of the roadblocks, regardless of the chaos and the confusion that Satan has tried to halt this mission and the mission of so many other voices of God with, Satan can't stop God's mission from being accomplished. So although we have not been in a physical worship setting that we are used to, let's do this this morning. My fabulous Facebook family, now for some of you that may already do this, I'm not speaking to you. But for those of you who are doing this at home already, let us praise God greater than great this morning. Remember when you used to fuss at the kids and your mate because y'all were running late to service? No need to say anything, y'all, because I already know I am not the only one that used to do this. But guess what? Now we get to praise God from home in our own pajamas with brushing our teeth being optional. That's right. That should have made somebody just give God a praise and a hallelujah. We get to praise God without even brushing our teeth. Isn't that wonderful? I digress. So let us give God a tremendous praise this morning. Let us shout this morning. Let us clap this morning. Let us dance this morning. Let us give a greater than great worship praise experience in our home to everyone in our home on this morning. And let's share this service with others. And let your friends worship with us this morning. We have sensational singing and a marvelous message, especially for you. Now let us honor God in prayer with Brother Dwight Kitchings Jr. And let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Good morning, Love Life, Facebook and YouTube. Let us pray. God, we thank you for allowing us to come together this morning to worship you. We ask you to have your way with this service. Bless our pastor, the first man, the speaker for this morning, and everyone watching. God, we love you and we honor you. We give your name the praise. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Come on and bless the Lord this morning. God is worthy of the praise, the honor, and the glory. Come on and bless him. Get up and dance. Thank you. 
together. Clap your hands before the Lord. Yes, he's worthy. Yes, God. Help me say, oh, come on and clap your hands with me. Put those hands together. Clap your hands with me. Oh, church today's scripture will be coming from philippians chapter 4 verses 11 through 13 niv version and it reads i am not saying this because i am in need for i have learned to be content whatever the circumstances i know what it is to be in need and i know what it is to have plenty i have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation whether well-fed or hungry whether living in plenty or in want I can do all this through him who gives me strength. The word of God for the people of God. Good morning, Love Life and Facebook friends. We are so glad that you signed on today with us. Whether you've been with us for a while or if you're just visiting today, we believe that God is going to do something great in all of our lives today and that you will be blessed. Now, we're going to uh, take up this week's tithes and offerings. Instead of giving a usual message today on, on the offering, I just want to take this opportunity to extend a thank you to all of the faithful givers that we have in our congregation. Spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ is the single most important task that anyone could ever do on this earth, and we are all called to do it equally. When you give, it enables love life to do things and reach people that need Jesus, that are lost in life, or simply need some food and water. Your giving spreads the gospel more than I could ever do by myself, and for that, I thank you. Our church buildings that we have over uh, uh, on Panthersville is funded by your giving. This church is funded by your generosity. We would simply not be here if we did not have a faithful body of believers willing to sow seed into this church. And we cannot be more grateful. So today, as we take up this offering, 
I thank you. And I pray that God will bless every single person that gives today. You are more than a congregation to me. You are the body of Christ and my family. And I thank God for each of you. Let us pray. Lord God, bless all those who give today. Because without them, O oh God, none of this would be possible. Your word says to give, and it will be given to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Will it be poured into your lap? I thank you for your blessing and for the awesome works you do in our ministry. Thank you, God. In your son Jesus' name, amen.
Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Praises be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let the people of God say amen. Amen. Praises be to our God for allowing us to come together today through Facebook and YouTube for this amazing worship experience. We thank God for all he has done. We want to thank God for all he is doing. And we thank God for all he's about to do in your life. Ah, my God, I'd like to give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who's the head of my life, the keeper of my soul. And just how sweet it is to be a child of God. To Pastor Washington, to Dr. Gracie Washington, thank you so much for this opportunity to share this morning the sweetest thing I know, and that is the Word of God to Deacon Robert Washington, to the elders and to the ministers, and to the whole entire church body, to everyone who is streaming this morning. God bless you. Uh, I want to give a shout out real quickly to my lovely wife, Shade Booker. I love you. Thank you so much. And to my son, Josiah Booker, I love you. Uh, to my family, to my mother and my sister, thank you for always being supportive. Amen. Let us pray this morning. Can we pray? Oh, gracious God, we thank you this morning, Lord. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you for who you are, Father God, Lord. We thank you for all that you have been in our lives. And thank you for keeping us, Father God, Lord. Speak through me and stand up through me, Father God, as I proclaim the word of God, Father God. Lord, we pray that lives can change. We pray that lives can be transformed, Father God. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen, amen, amen. If you have your Bibles, can you turn with me to Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 through 13? Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 through 13. I promise I won't be before you long. But the word of the Lord declares, I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me the strength. Amen. If I can talk with you just, just for a moment uh, with the subject, there is nothing I can't handle. There is nothing. I can't handle. Brothers and sisters, we are living in some unusual times today. We are living in times, it seems that trouble is knocking at everyone's door. We turn on Fox 5 News, China 2 News, and see so much trouble. Police killing, economy down, still going through a pandemic. So many people are suffering with their health and finances and job issues. Uh, trouble is so prevalent in our lives today. Trouble is everywhere you look. It's so much trouble. I heard a quote say, never let life's hardship disturb you. No one can avoid problems, but there's always a solution to your problems. Philippians 1 says, be confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So because life throws you a curveball, you must be confident and have the assurance that if Jesus brought you to it, he'll lead you through it. Not saying you won't cry or be hurt or be sad or angry or even upset, but don't be dismayed whatever betide you. Meaning don't let what it is upset you or frustrate you. Just understand that this too shall pass. So don't be dismayed because God will take care of you. That's good news this morning. The songwriter also said, beneath his wings where love abides, God will take care of you. I had to learn some things about life that it throws some good times and it throws some bad times at you. But if I'm up to bat, whatever come my way, if God is on my side, I can hit whatever it is. Meaning that I have to keep moving on. And, and if I miss, God is right there to hold my hand. And if I strike out, he's right there to give me another chance. I understand in life. I understand in life, troubling times can change your attitude about life. Yeah. 
But we shouldn't allow what happens in our lives change who we are. We have to keep smiling, keep praying, and keep believing that God will and can work it out. Because as you know, all things work together for the good of them that loves the Lord. Many of the good and the bad, trial comes in our lives. But trial, trials come only to make you stronger. So you might be crying, but you have to understand that weeping may endure for that night. But here come the good news. Joy is coming. The good news that if we put our trust in God, put your trust in the Lord. With uh, if you if you believe in God, but you got to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, and you will understand that there is nothing in life you can't handle. Just want to give you a, a little background uh, of this particular chapter and uh, um, book Philippians. This is Paul who is writing to the church of Philippi. Paul writes a thank you note to the believers at Philippi for their help in his hour of need. And he uses this occasion to send along some instruction on Christian unity. Uh, his goal, and, 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 and he, center, he center his thoughts around this, only in Christ are real unity and joy comes. With Christ as your model, and service, you can have a oneness of purpose, attitude, goal, and labor, a truth which Paul illustrates in his own life. And the church of Philippi desperately, they desperately needed this because they were at odds at each other. They needed to hear this message from Paul. Within their own ranks, fellow workers uh, 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 in the Philippians church were going against each other, hindering the work that needs to proclaim the good news and the new life in Christ. Because of this, Paul charged the church to stand fast, be on the same mind, rejoice in the Lord always, but by prayer, let your requests be made known and the peace of God shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The church at Philippi was the first church Paul founded. Some theologians believe that Paul was under house arrest when he was writing to the church of Philippi. But if you read uh, Philippians in your spare time in its entirety, definitely this chapter, I love this chapter, but when you read it tonight, Paul says in verse 6, do not be anxious about anything. Don't be anxious about nothing basically, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And you, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guide your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Then he go on and said, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, Whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is any worth of praise, think about these things, which you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, Paul is saying. Practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. Paul wasn't encouraging. He, Paul was encouraging the church. That's what I like about Paul. He was an encourager. He was helping the people to know Christ. He helped the people of Philippi to get to know the Lord as he did. And that's what's wrong with a lot of us today. We need to be encouraging. We need to tell people, tell people about the Lord and what the Lord has done for you. That's the reason we go through tests in our lives. Because with no tests, there's no testimony. Amen. But three points I want to give you, and I promise you I'll be out your way, but these three points will help you in life and to understand there's nothing you cannot handle. There's nothing I can handle, number one, because I have learned to be content. Verse 11 says, I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. 
Paul was saying in this particular verse that I have learned how to handle whatever life is dealing with me. I have learned how to handle whatever I'm dealing with at this particular moment. Content meaning that I am satisfied where I'm, where I'm at in life right now, meaning that I am grateful to have what I have in life at this particular stage in my life. Meaning I'm learning how to handle this circumstance that I'm in. So whatever you're facing, content means I'm learning how to deal with it and I'm learning how to be grateful at the same time. People of God, in order to handle whatever comes your way, you have to be content. Being content is not wanting more. I don't know about y'all, but if the Lord never do anything else for me, I can truly testify that he's done enough. But don't worry because God is still in the blessing business. Content is saying thank you for what you've done for me already and where I'm at now. Being content, if I just have a dollar to my name, thank you, Lord. If I only have, if if if, if I only have one of my bills paid this month, thank you, Lord. If I don't have the best job in the world, but I still can say, thank you, Lord. If I don't drive the car that I want to drive, I still can say, thank you, Lord. If I don't have the best wife or best husband, uh, uh, but you still can say, thank you for the one that I do have. For example, contentment means if I don't have a car and I have to use the motor bus or Uber or Lyft, I still got to say, thank you, Lord. Can I just break it down to you? Content is being if I stay in an apartment, I still got to say thank you, Lord. I may not have the house that I want, but while I'm in this apartment, I'm going to say thank you because I know better is coming. But at this particular moment where I'm at, I'm still going to say thank you. That's being content. I may don't have a lot of money in the bank, but I still can say thank you for the money that I do have. So don't stress yourself out over your problems and get depressed over your situation. But learn how to say hallelujah anyhow. Thank you, Jesus, for still being God in my life. Because the Bible said that he inhabits the praises of his people. So I wonder, do I have anybody who have a content praise? A content is being thankful to God for where you are. It's not where you want to be, but God, I still thank you for still keeping me. I still thank you for still making a way out of no way. It's not where I want to be, but God, I still thank you for making a way. Because if it wasn't for you, Lord, where would I be? When I read this, I had to learn how to be content because you don't let everything get you down. Because if you let everything get the best of you, you'll find yourself falling and coming depressed. But you have to learn to still look to the hills. <laughs> which cometh my help, and all of your help comes from the Lord. Lord, Paul was saying, I've learned that whatever state I'm in, I have to be content. This hit home for, for, for a lot of us because we put so much focus in on our problems and forget about who's the problem solver. I don't know about you, but I'm not going to worry about what tomorrow holds. I'm not going to worry about my trouble or my problems, but I'm going to lift up my holy hands and still begin to thank the Lord and still give God the glory and the praise. You know why? Because it could be worse. But instead of complaining, I'm going to say, thank you, Lord. Why? Because I know who holds my future. I know who got my back. The Bible says, if God be for me, who can be against us? Come here, Job, for a second. I call Job up for a second. Can I call him up for a second? Job lost everything he had. He lost his children. The man lost all he had, and then, he, then his body became ill. But Job was content. Job said, naked I came out the womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord can take it away. But bless. That's good news. Be the name of the Lord. I may lost everything I had. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I may be sick, but blessed 
be the name of the Lord. That's why the book, uh, uh, the book Psalms tell us, uh, 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 it, song is, it tell us to bless the Lord. At all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Anybody want to bless the Lord this morning? Anybody who, who got a praise on their lip this morning? Thank you, Lord, because I'm learning to be content whatever situation that I'm in. There's nothing you can handle because I'm learning. We have to learn how to be content. Amen, somebody. We have to learn. Secondly, we have to learn that's nothing you can handle. Secondly, because I'm learning how to adjust. Paul says in verse 12, I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. When Paul said, I know what it is to be in need. Many he know what it means to humble himself. Meaning that he has been lower than low. And it caused him to become more humble. Paul was saying, Paul said, I've been in some tight corners in my life. Paul is saying that he's been in some bad situations. I know Paul can testify. Paul can testify this this the same Paul that was locked up in jail. This is the same Paul who was shipwrecked. This is the same Paul who was bitten by a snake. This is the same Paul who had thorns in his flesh. So Paul is telling us this morning that I, I, I have seen and I had the spirit's turmoil and hardship in my life. So Paul is telling us, so don't think you are so high and mighty me and don't get the big head or start smelling yourself because the same God who gave it to you is the same God who can take it away. Paul said, my experiences that I have been through, my situations, my circumstances, my downs has caused me to be more humble. Not only caused him to be more humble, but give all the glory to God. Yeah. And then he said, I know what it is to have plenty. He knew what it means to be on top. He knew to have the riches of the world. He knew what it means not to want for anything. Paul is telling us, uh, 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 Paul is showing us basically how to adjust. Paul is showing us, uh, uh, saying that he know how to adjust his life troubles because in life situations, sometimes will change and will cause us to make some adjustments in our lives. But the good news is that God doesn't change. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. Paul is saying that he knows how to, to live on having nothing. And he knows how to live on having everything. Meaning he learned how to <laughs> basically had to ride the bus if a car wasn't available. Ah, uh, my, 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 Paul said he knows. He knows what it means to learn to live with and without. Paul is saying that every day hasn't been easy for him, but he can handle anything that came his way because he learned to adjust. I may have Everything I need, but if God take it away, I have to make some adjustments in my life. Not meaning that I will always be here and stuck in this place. Not meaning that I'm going to be here always, but the Bible says if you're faithful over a few, that God will make you a ruler over many. So church, we have to learn how to adjust. Adjusting uh, reminds me of the four seasons. We have winter, spring, summer, and fall. And all these seasons we have to adjust to. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. We, 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 we have winter. It's the coldest season of the year. But it's also the shortest season of the year. Winter, that's, that, that's, that, yeah, yeah, that's when you begin to uh, uh, get cold and, and you begin to put on your jacket and you begin to bundle up. You begin to turn on the heat so you can warm yourself up. Why? You have to change for this particular season. You are what? Adjusting. 
Then you have spring when things begin to warm up, when the flowers are blooming and everything is oh so nice. You can take off the long sleeves and the sweaters because it's, 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 it's just a little too hot for that. Why? Because you are learning to adjust to the season. Then you have summer when it's just crazy. You begin to turn the, ac the, the, the AC, the air conditioner up because you are hot because you have to learn to adjust to the summer season. Then you have fall. The season when it gets a little cooler. That's when you begin to wear, you know, you don't have to bundle up so much. You don't have to Turn on the heat so much, but I love fall because you get to dress so nicely in fall. But 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 you, you you see what I'm saying? You you're learning to adjust to the atmosphere. So in life, we have to adjust to our situation and deal with what's in front of us. I have a story to tell you, and I promise I'm gonna get out your way. Uh, there was a man with four sons. He wanted his sons to learn not to judge things too quickly, so he sent them each on a quest. Uh, one at a time to go look at a pear tree that was a great distance away. The first son went in the winter, the second one in the spring, the third in the summer, and the youngest son in the fall. When they had all gone and come back, he called them together to describe what they had seen. The first son said that the tree was ugly. It was bent and twisted. The second son said, no, it was covered with green buds and full of promise. The third son disagreed. He said it was filled with blossom. Oh, my God, that smells so sweet and looks so beautiful. It was the most graceful thing that he had seen. The last son disagreed with all of them. He said it was uh, 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 dripping with fruit and full of life and fulfillment. The man explained to his son that they were all right. Because they had each seen but only one season of this tree. He told them that you cannot judge a tree or a person by only one season. And that the essence of who they are and the pleasure of joy and love that comes from that life can only be measured at the end when all the seasons are up. If you give up, give up when it's winter, you'll miss the promise of your spring, the beauty of your summer, the fulfillment of your fall. The moral of the story, don't let pain, don't let the pain of one season destroy the joy of all the rest. Don't judge life by one difficult season. Preserve through the difficult patches and better times are sure to come sometime or later. So I'm not going to give up and I'm not going to give in. I'm going to learn to adjust to life situations because I know better is on the way. So you can handle this. You can, there's nothing you can handle because I'm learning how to adjust. Thirdly, there's nothing I can handle because I know who's my strength. Yeah, yeah. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The NIV uh, said I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Paul has let us know that there is someone who can turn, who you can turn to. Uh, Paul told us that his grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So Paul knew that everything he had been through, it was nobody but the Lord who brought him out of it. Paul said, it's not my doing. So that's why Paul can write, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I just stopped by to tell you that there's nothing you can't handle because you have Jesus on your side. And when you have Jesus on your side, all things are possible. I have to leave you, but before I leave you, I want you to know there's nothing you can handle. The old songwriter said, I've learned to lean on Jesus everlasting on. When you begin to lean on Jesus, see, that's where your strength comes from. When you begin to lean on Jesus, ah, uh, you know that you can't do nothing without him. So when you go on your way, I want you to declare today, there's nothing I can't handle. I may feel weak, and I may feel worried, 
and I may feel worn, but there's nothing I can handle. You may have questions and you may have challenges, but there's one thing that which I am convinced there's nothing that you can handle this morning because the Lord is pouring his strength in you. The Lord is pouring his strength in me from the inside. So when you read your Bible, the, the Bible declares that God's arm, God arms me with his strength. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is my strength. The Bible says in Psalms 27, that first verse, that the Lord is the strength of my life. The Bible says that the Lord will strengthen his people. The Bible even says that the Lord is a refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. The Bible also said he gives power to the weak and those who have no might, he increased their strength. And the Bible says that even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So when you're faced with advancements and when you're faced with adversity, just remember to declare there's nothing I cannot handle because who gives me the strength of Jesus is pouring his strength in me. Uh, the real reason you can make this declaration is that on one Friday, Jesus died on a hill called Calvary. On that Friday, Jesus died on that old rugged cross. Uh, can I get anybody to talk back at me? Uh, on Friday, Jesus was hung up for our hangups. Uh, good God from Zion. Uh, Y'all, he looked mighty weak on that cross, but he died in strength. Uh, how do you know he died in strength? Because the Bible said, no man. Ah, no man, he said, no man, take my life, but I lay it down myself. If I die, I lay it down and I'll pick it back up again. He died in strength. He had to have strength to say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He had to have strength to tell the thief who was receiving his just reward. Today you shall be with me in paradise. He had to have strength to make sure that his mother was taken care of. He had strength uh, uh, to cry with a loud voice, my God, my God has thou forsaken me. Uh, he has strength uh, in order to say, I thirst for the salvation of the lost souls. Uh, he had to have strength uh, to say, it is finished. Uh, he has strength uh, to say, Father, into thy hands. Uh, I commend my spirit, and then he died. Uh, I said he died, y'all. Uh, and they put him in Joseph's brand new tomb. Uh, but can I tell y'all, uh, Jesus went in the Grave with strength, uh, so much strength uh, that he led the cap the captives free. Uh, he led the captives free, uh, and he went down to hell and preached a three night revival. Uh, and that early Sunday morning, uh, he got up with all power in his hand. Uh, he got up with strength in his hand. Uh, so I have to leave you right now, uh, but I just want you to understand today: uh, there's nothing uh, you can handle uh, because if God be for me, uh, who can be against? me. Me, huh? There's nothing uh, I can handle huh? because my God shall supply all my needs uh, according to his riches and glory. Uh, there's nothing uh, I can handle uh, because I got God on my side. Uh, there's nothing uh, I can handle uh, because no weapon uh, that formed against me shall prosper. Uh, good God from Zion. Uh, there's nothing uh, I can handle. Uh, you may have a haters uh, all around you, but I like the Bible says uh, he prepares uh, a table uh, in the presence of my enemies. Uh, so there's nothing uh, you can't handle. Uh, no poverty, uh, no prosperity, uh, no advancements, uh, no adver adversities, uh, no pain, uh, no hurt, no disappointment, no trials, no persecution, no bills, no money, no sickness, no disease, no divorce. There's nothing uh, I can't handle. Uh, there's nothing, y'all, uh, that can keep you down for too long uh, because the Bible 
Bible says, uh, the Bible says there's nothing shall separate me from the love of God, not death, uh, not life, uh, nor angels, uh, or principalities, uh, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come. Uh, nothing uh, shall separate me uh, from the love of God, uh, nor height, nor debt, no sh- nothing uh, shall any other creature separate me from the love of God. Uh, and with all these things, uh, we are more than conquerors uh, through Christ who loves us. There is nothing uh, you can't handle. Uh, can I get someone that tells Justify. Someone to type, there's nothing I can't handle. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I am his own. There is nothing you cannot handle. If God is on your side, he's pouring his strength in you. So when you go on, you will know, I must be content. I must adjust. And I know who's my strength. I know where my strength is coming from. Because all I do is win. No matter what may come my way, all I'm going to do is win. Because I know there's nothing I can handle because I got God on my side. My time is up. God bless you. Minister Booker, God bless you for that wonderful message. Letting us know that If we can learn to be content, if we are learning to adjust, and if we know who's our strength, that there's nothing we can't handle. Well, at this time, Love Life, Facebook, YouTube, we just want to offer Christ to you. For we know that Christ is the source of our strength. And with him, we can do all things. So the door of the church is open for membership, for watch care, for prayer requests, for praise reports. Go to our website at www.lovelifecfc.org. Click the tabs for prayer requests or membership. And we have elders, ministers, prayer warriors that are willing and well equipped to minister to your need. We have a pastor that is waiting to be the shepherd of your soul. So go right now, my brother, my sister, go to the website and know that we will love you to life. Be blessed as we go back into our service. God bless you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God for that amazing message from his throne. I know one person that that message helped. Yes, me. Thank you, Minister John Booker, for that awesome encouragement from God. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, have a wonderful week, and may your peace be multiplied. God bless. Thank you for joining today's service. Remember, for online giving at Love Life, go to pushpay.com or text Love Life to 77977. You can also mail your tithes and offerings to the address at the end of this broadcast. We invite you to join us for any of our online services, which include Sunday school at 9 o'clock a.m., Sunday morning worship at 10 o'clock a.m., Wednesday night Bible study at 7 o'clock p.m. Join us at 7.14 a.m. each Wednesday for corporate prayer by calling 712-832-8305. The access code is 481-3100. 
For weekly announcements and more information, please visit our website at www.lovelifecfc.org or visit the Love Life app. Love Life Christian Fellowship Church, where we make people our priority.